Lesson 5-4, Special Parallelograms. These are the parallelograms you've dealt with for most of your life, with a few additions. So, rather than try and go into detail, let's just say, how do you define a rectangle? A rectangle looks like this, and it has 90 degree angles. Well, you can just simply say it's a quadrilateral, and I'm going to be lazy and just write quad, with four 90 degree angles. And you say, well, does it need more than that? Well, if the opposite angle is congruent, it's a parallelogram. If it has four 90 degree angles and the sides are parallel, wham, you're there. So, to find a rhombus, for those who don't know, a rhombus looks something like this. It's got four congruent sides. So again, it's just a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. And you know it's a parallelogram because opposite sides, both opposite sides are congruent. So you don't need any more definition to know that a rhombus is a parallelogram. And to find a square, and you may be guessing where this is going. And there's more than one definition, but a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four 90 degree angles. Simple enough. So does the square have all the properties of a parallelogram? Obviously. Does a rhombus? Yes. Does a rectangle? Yes. And they have some more properties. We'll go through them relatively quickly. So a rectangle, rhombus, and square are all parallelograms. And actually, I don't feel like writing that in. I'll just do this. Parallelograms. They have all the properties, and they have a few other things that are special about them. Diagonal, diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. AD is congruent to BC. How come? Hopefully you can figure it out. You know that they bisect each other. In this case, they are congruent. You're looking at two isosceles triangles. Again, how come? You could look at it as two right triangles that are congruent. Why? Well, the opposite sides have to be congruent. So you're looking at side, angle, side. If they're congruent, then you know you have diagonals that are congruent. All comes back down to triangles. Whenever you get stuck on a parallelogram, quadrilateral problem, draw yourself some triangles, see what you're dealing with. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. not drawn a rhombus. So, see if you know why. Hopefully you notice that we have four congruent triangles. If you memorize nothing else about rhombi, rhombuses, you should memorize that because that'll save you so much trouble. That means that angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 are congruent, and they add up to 360, which means they have to equal 90. End of story.
each diagonal of a rhombus bisects the two angles of the rhombus at the end. And that one follows from what I just did. 5, 6, 7, 8. That's too small. I'm going to write a bigger rhombus down here. A little less busy. And we're saying... Uh, let's not use 1, 2, 3, 4. To use those, 5, 6, 7, 8. Measure of angle 5 equals measure of angle 6 equals measure of angle 7 equals measure of angle 8. Same thing here, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you should look at that and say, well, of course they do. It's four congruent triangles, like we just proved in the previous step. So they have to all be congruent. Midpoint, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. This is a beautiful, beautiful problem. I put it on my final exam. I love it. Six, eight, ten. Right triangle. Go to the midpoint. Get rid of your 10. 5 and 5. How far is this piece? It says it's equidistant. So x equals 5. How come? Try to remember what you know about diagonals in a rectangle. They bisect each other, and they're congruent. Therefore, all four pieces have to be five. You can do this on Sketchpad another time. If you have a quadrilateral, and you've got one right angle, you've got all right angles. Obviously. Parallelogram, opposite angles, same side interior angles, same side interior angles, they all add up to 180, and therefore each angle is 90. And another duh, duh one. Parallelogram, if these sides are congruent, then all four sides are congruent, obviously. Opposite sides have to both be congruent. Therefore, if adjacent sides are congruent, all four sides are congruent. A lot of people complain about this lesson. They say, oh, there's so much to memorize here. I say, no, just look at your triangles and work it out each time. And after a little while, you get fast at it and you remember everything. It's not really a problem. Let's take a quick look on Sketchpad at our right triangle. Make this bigger. Oops. Oh, it would stay right for me. Well, let's find the midpoint. And let's label all these points A, B, C, D. Let's measure from point to point. Let's do A, B first. Two point nine four centimeters. I did not need A, B. That was dumb. Need B, D. Point nine eight, A, D. Two point nine eight and C, D. 0.98. So it works. That's it for now. Get doing some problems. Good luck.